Hybrid animals are the fascinating offspring resulting from the mating of two different species. This phenomenon occurs both naturally and through human intervention, leading to animals that have intriguing combinations. While most hybrids are sterile, unable to produce offspring, sometimes it is through hybridization that new species begin to emerge. In fact, hybridization is not an unusual event in the wild. Certain groups of animals, such as cichlids, hummingbirds, and birds of paradise, frequently hybridize, producing offspring that exhibit a mix of characteristics from both parent species. This blending of traits can sometimes lead to enhanced survival abilities or unique physical appearances. In this video, we're delving into the world of hybrids, exploring their origins, characteristics, and the impact they have on our understanding of genetics and biodiversity. Perhaps one of the best known hybrids is the Liger. When a male lion breeds with a tigress, the resulting offspring are known as Ligers, and they generally outgrow both of their parents in size. In fact, Ligers are the largest cats in the world and can be as much as 50% heavier than the average tiger and nearly double the weight of an average lion. This is because the resulting offspring lack the growth inhibiting genes and the growth limiting hormones that are normally present in purebred progeny. Most hybrid animals are sterile, but this isn't the case for ligers. While almost all the male ligers are, many female ligers, which are sometimes called ligresses, are actually fertile and do occasionally produce offspring with either male tigers or lions. Ligers aren't known to occur in nature, despite the fact that the two parent species do have historical ranges that overlap. In fact, lions and tigers can still be found in the wild together in one small part of India where the Asiatic lion has managed to survive, but they do not interbreed. The first known ligers were produced in the late 18th century in India. They were depicted in a color plate by a French naturalist. By the Victorian times, breeding ligers had become popular among wildlife collectors and naturalists. When a male tiger is bred with a female lion, the resulting hybrid is called a tigan. While these hybrids also share characteristics of both of their parents, they do not reach the huge sizes that ligers do. Sharks live throughout the world's seas and oceans. Despite the fact that many of the over 500 known species have ranges that overlap, no shark hybrids were known to exist. But that all changed in 2012. Scientists in Australia announced the discovery of the first ever shark hybrids. The black tip shark is found in tropical coastal waters around the world, but in the north and northeastern sides of Australia, its range overlaps with the smaller Australian black tip shark. But researchers noticed something strange. Some sharks were being found further south than either species was known to occur. While they looked a lot like Australian black tip sharks, they were larger in size. Genetic testing confirmed that they were in fact hybrids between the two black tip species, and it seemed that their hybridization made them better adapted to surviving in the cooler waters down the coast. What's particularly interesting about these hybrids is that there wasn't just one or two, but a population of at least 57 was discovered surviving where neither of their parent species was found. The research suggests that this hybridization has actually proven to be advantageous for the offspring, and that this new shark hybrid is on its way to developing into a new and separate species. One of the more fascinating and relatively recent discoveries in the world of animal hybrids is the Groller bear, also known as the Pisley bear. This hybrid occurs when a grizzly bear mates with a polar bear. The resulting offspring exhibit a blend of characteristics from both parent species, and fewer than 10 of these hybrids have ever been confirmed to exist. Groller bears tend to inherit the size and muscular build of grizzly bears, 
combined with the light fur and certain adaptive features of polar bears. This unique combination allows them to thrive in environments that are a mix of Arctic and subarctic conditions. Unlike many hybrid animals, growler bears can be fertile, which means they're capable of reproducing. This fertility is particularly intriguing to scientists that are studying the potential for hybrid species to adapt to changing environments. The presence of growler bears in the wild is believed to be a direct result of climate change. As Arctic ice melts and polar bears are forced to migrate southward, they come into contact more and more with grizzly bears, leading to increased opportunities for interbreeding. The first documented sighting of a wild growler bear was in 2006 in the Canadian Arctic. This initial discovery has since been followed by multiple confirmed sightings, and all of these growler bear hybrid specimens are believed to share the same polar bear mother. In the 1950s, researchers collected a few bird specimens near a tributary of the upper Kururi River in the eastern Brazilian Amazon. They're mostly green and yellow, with males having a yellow crown, and they appeared to be a new species of mannequin bird. In 1959, they were described as Lepidothrix villaboasi, the golden-crowned mannequin. But after the initial specimens were collected, the species seemed to disappear, with researchers being unable to find any more of them for about 45 years. Then, in 2002, after they realized that they had the locality mixed up, they were rediscovered, and researchers were finally able to study them again. They seemed to only live in a couple of very small populations in one small area. Were they critically endangered, or was something else going on? Genetic testing was done, and the mystery of this rare species was finally solved. It turns out that the golden-crowned mannequins were actually hybrid birds that were initially produced when two other similar species, the opal-crowned mannequin and the snow-capped mannequin, interbred. Both of these species have crowns that are essentially white, but the feathers in their crowns have nanostructural organizations that make them shine shades of blue and lavender. In the hybrid birds, these structures were lacking, making the male's crowns very dull and unattractive to females. Over time, the female hybrids chose only to breed with males that showed more yellow in their crowns. Eventually, this caused all of the males to have bright yellow crowns, and it drove the females to prefer the yellow-crowned hybrid males more and more. This is known as hybrid speciation, the result of hybrid animals being produced that are isolated enough from parent populations that they stop mixing. And in the case of the golden-crowned mannequins, it can also happen when hybrid females begin to favor a trait found only among hybrid males. Being that zebras are members of the Equus genus, it should come as no surprise that they can hybridize with almost any other type of zebra, horse, or donkey. Zebra hybrids are called zebroids, but depending on what species the zebra is crossed with, there is a different name given. When a zebra crosses with a horse, it's called either a zorse or a hebra. The distribution and intensity of the stripes varies greatly between any two specimens, and their temperaments can be more docile like a horse or extremely wild and untamable like a zebra. This impressive zorse is called Eccles, and she lives in a zoo in Germany. Her mother, a white horse named Eclipse, was sent to live on a ranch in Italy for a while, a ranch that happened to also have a zebra stallion named Ulysses. When she got back to Germany, she was pregnant, and ended up giving birth to this impressive zorse. When a zebra is crossed with a donkey, it's called a zonkey or a zadonk, while crossing a zebra with a wild ass produces a zebras. In both cases, the hybrids produced tend to be mostly gray, have faint stripes on the body, and bold striping on the legs. Zadonks are rare in captivity, but interestingly, also occur very rarely in the wild. On the Horn of Africa, 
The ranges of the African wild ass and Grevy zebra overlap in a few areas, and hybrids have been seen in the wild. Perhaps my favorite zebroid is the zoni. While this is a type of zorse, zonies are specifically produced when a zebra is crossed with a pony, resulting in a hybrid offspring that is smaller in stature like a pony, but also striped like a zebra. Zonies have only been produced a handful of times, making them the rarest of the zebroids. In 1981, SeaWorld in Tokyo, Japan got a surprise. They had been housing two species of cetacean together. The two species were quite different from each other. One was bottlenose dolphins, which are about two meters long, and the other was false killer whales, which are much larger, being about five meters long. Zookeepers were shocked when one of their female bottlenose dolphins gave birth to a calf that was larger and darker than normal. The new hybrid was called a wolfin, and this was the first documented case of the two species hybridizing. Sadly, only 200 days later, the calf died. Four years later, in 1985, the first wolfin was born in the United States at Sea Life Park in the state of Hawaii. The female calf was named Kakaimalu, a Hawaiian name which means from the peaceful ocean. She grew fast quickly outgrowing her mother, and amazingly, she survived into adulthood. Zookeepers were quite surprised to find that Kukaimalu was actually fertile, and she ended up having three different calves over the years with male bottlenose dolphins. Each of her calves were 75% bottlenose dolphin and 25% false killer whale. Kukaimalu died in 2024 at the age of 39, but one of her calves a male named Kawili Kai still lives at Sea Life Park. He looks much like other bottlenose dolphins, only being slightly darker in color. In Australia, it isn't uncommon to see parrots in urban environments. Flocks of lorikeets, budgies, and even cockatoos frequent neighborhoods in search of food. And last year, an Aussie man spotted a parrot that turned out to be a rare hybrid. Near the town of Tenterfield, on the border of New South Wales and Queensland, Lenny Burtonshaw regularly fed local parrots in his backyard as he enjoyed watching them show off their beautiful colors and big personalities. He regularly got lorikeets, king parrots, sulfur-crested cockatoos, and kalas. But one day, a parrot flew in that he didn't recognize, and all of the other parrots seemed to be annoyed by its presence. It was some type of cockatoo, but its coloration wasn't like other species. It had gray wings and a gray back, a peach crest and cheeks, and the rest of the feathers were a mix of peach and white. He noticed that it was smaller than the sulfur-crested cockatoos, but larger than the galahs. Thankfully, he managed to snap a few pictures of it and posted them to the internet. Initially, many people were skeptical, insisting that the image must be AI. But Dr. Bob Donnelly from the University of Queensland confirmed that it was in fact real, and that it was actually a very rare sulfur-crested cockatoo gala hybrid. Dr. Donnelly himself has only seen these hybrid birds two or three times and not much is known about them in the wild. They're occasionally produced in captivity, and just like hybrid mammals, these hybrid parrots are sterile. In the 1990s, camel breeders in Dubai got an idea. They wanted to produce an animal that possessed the size and strength of a dromedary camel, along with the more cooperative temperament and fleece quality of a llama. This idea was particularly appealing to those in arid regions, where such a hybrid could be immensely useful for transportation, work, and wool production. The concept of creating a hybrid between a camel and a llama was born. The journey to create the Kama began at the Camel Reproduction Center in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. 
it turns out that a hybrid can only be created by crossing a male camel with a female llama. And seeing as a male camel is almost six times larger than a female llama, artificial insemination was the only way to make this happen. The first successful kama, a male named Rama, was born on January 14, 1998. He ended up being larger than a llama, but smaller than a camel, lacked any hump, and didn't produce wool that was markedly softer than a camel's hair. Behaviorally, he was also a huge letdown, being far more temperamental than the breeders hoped he would be. He would charge people, bite them, and never stood still when the breeders were working with him. In fact, the breeders described Rama the Kama as being nasty. They believed that he was like this not because he was a hybrid, but because he was socially rejected by both camels and llamas, causing him to be lonely and act out. Instead, he passed his time primarily alone, kicking a soccer ball around his pen. Despite this, they tried again, and in 2002, a female calf was born and named Kamala. Her temperament was far better than Rama, so the breeder's hopes were restored, and Kama breeding continued. That breeding continues to this day, but it hasn't resulted in the commercial success that breeders initially hoped it would be. And that's it for today's video. What other hybrid animals do you know of? Let me know in the comments below. I need to say a special thanks to my patrons. It's because of their ongoing support that I'm able to produce a video like this every week. If you want to support the channel and get early access to my videos each week, join us on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.